Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over, uh, well, I'll start this. Um, I always talk about the, the system, the, the way the system's designed, the money system, and how it has to have an accompanying GDP and an expansion in energy. Um, when cycles get very late, uh, I should say debt cycles, money cycles, when they get late stage, uh, they go vertical, they go exponential. There's an article here uh, that says fake money is fueling a very real debt crisis. Uh, they go over a lot of different things in this article. I'm going to share it with everybody because I think it's, well, it's important to know that it's out there. Um, <clears throat> to know exactly where we are in the debt cycle, that can be difficult to, to get it to gain where exactly this could potentially fail or go into hyperinflation. Uh, no one's going to know that to the T, but to prepare for it and to come up with strategies of investing strategies for investment that benefit in the short term and protect you from the long term uh, debt crisis, I think is, is a pretty easy bet uh, to make, uh, especially those that are like physical metals, um, using the ratio game to swap between metals and increase your ounces, uh, which beats the S&P 500 anyway, even in cycle and out of cycle. I don't see where the, the necessary risk is. Uh, but I've been playing that game for the past 10, 15 years plus, and I've just been accumulating ounces uh, and more ounces based off of ratios of physical precious metals. But let's go over what this article is going to talk about here first, and you guys can kind of get a gist of what's going on with the debt cycle. So here is fake money is fueling a very real debt crisis. And I'll just go over these three kind of summations and we'll get into the article. Soaring global debt has pushed investors into new assets to preserve their wealth. Total global debt, including derivatives and unfunded liabilities, is over three quadrillion. Commodities such as food and energy and many raw materials like precious metals could go up exponentially, and paper assets like stocks, bonds, and Bitcoin could implode. Sounds familiar to kind of what I'm saying. Uh, where we have this paradigm shift where we have an alignment we have, we have an alignment of things that are coming into alignment in terms of housing expansionary phase of liquidity and also commodities being cheap in relationship to other assets and then the rotation of all those things based off interest rates that alignment's already there this is what's going to fuel it to to the to the to the nth degree if this were to also come uh, along with it. So it's another piece that's aligning uh, in this alignment. Uh, and again, guys, if you guys want to join the Platinum membership below, uh, you can join and see how I'm playing this and the companies that I own and the physical precious metals I own and all of the financial education stuff that, that also backs all this. Just plugging that in there. Uh, so it says, fool's gold uh, in many guises, whether it's fake paper money, Ponzi investment schemes, Fake and manipulated gold derivatives, Bitcoin, or just fake gold discoveries in Uganda, all of which are discussed in this article. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it says, and I'm going to read some of these quotes. The tendency of inconvertible paper money is to create fictitious wealth, bubbles which by their bursting produce inconvenience. The tendency of inconvertible paper money. Exactly. Uh, the elegant and understated courtesy of the English is well-known inconvenience is for an early 19th century aristocrat what a modern Englishman today would call a bloody mess. Confucius described this trait 2,500 years ago. The noble-minded are calm and steady. Little people are forever fussing and fretting. Confucius. Uh, coming in down here, uh, says in today's um, morally bankrupt world, leaders tend to be fussing and fretting little people who frantically create fictitious money and wealth. This is why, as we enter the final stage of this era, we will see more sackings of leaders. Social unrest and civil wars will sadly be commonplace too. The combination of weak leaders and fake money is a fitting end to a major economic cycle. It actually couldn't end in any other way. Coming on down here, another... Quote, there is no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as the result of voluntary abandonment of further credit expansion or later as a final and total catastrophe of the currency system involved. 
And that's what the end of a credit cycle is. It's basically you can choose to just end it before it happens or to have it just completely collapse. <clears throat> uh, it says, this is impossible for central bankers to turn off the money spigots. It's the way the money system is designed. And that's, <clears throat> that's what's important here. It's don't believe for one moment that Powell or Lagarde would contemplate turning off the tap that has kept them and their money forging friends in power for decades. Yes, they will make gestures like the Fed is now attempting with QT, quantitative tightening. So the balance sheet for the, of the Fed has come down to $70 billion since mid-March. Big deal. That's a 0.7% reduction in three and a half months for a balance sheet that has grown by 240%, or $5.3 trillion since the end of August 2019. In 2006, the Fed balance sheet was $900 billion. And today it is nine trillion, a mere tenfold increase. Let's just remind ourselves that the current problems in the world did not start with COVID in early 2020, but with irreparable damage to the financial system, which central banks couldn't conceal behind August 2019. This is the beginning of the of the end of this 100 plus year financial era. Was the Great Financial Crisis (GFC), which started in 2006. So coming on down, uh, since 2006, the balance sheets of the major central banks, Swiss National Bank, Bank of China, Bank of Japan, and ECB Fed, have grown exponentially from under $5 trillion to $36 trillion, a seven-fold increase. This is the global central bank creating money out of nothing. It's just going vertical. It's the end of potentially this debt cycle. Global debt up 200x since 1971. And it's going to 2000x. It says we must remember that irresponsible debt creating central banks are only part of the problem. The real money printers are the commercial banks. That's that's the loaning and lending in the system. So if we if we look at glo uh, total global debt, it has grown from 100 trillion in 2000 to 300 trillion today. In 2006, total global debt was 120 trillion. As the graph below shows, total global debt, including derivatives and unfunded liabilities, is over three quadrillion. When the financial system crashes, these derivatives will prove worthless as counterparties fail and the central banks will print two to three quadrillion in a futile attempt to save the banks and the system. This is the design of the system. It must grow. It has to grow. It cannot go in the opposite direction. It is by design. If it goes in the opposite direction, it all falls apart. It fails. So coming on down, it says the coming exponential move will be terminal. Uh, also, it's important to understand how exponential moves happen. I explained this in an article uh, from 2017. Only contrarians will survive. Uh, and it, what it goes into here is how they describe how the exponential Nature is not seen by most people because most people think linear, linear, linearly. There we go. Imagine a football stadium which is filled with water. Every minute, one drop is added. The number of drops doubles every minute. Thus, it goes from 1 to 2, 4, 8, 16. It doubles, etc. So how long would it take to fill the entire stadium? One day, one month, or a year? No, it would be a lot quicker. It would only take 50 minutes. That in itself is hard to understand, but even more interestingly, how full is the stadium after 45 minutes? Most people would guess 75 to 90%. Totally wrong. After 45 minutes, the stadium is only 7% full. In the final five minutes, the stadium goes from 7% full to 100% full. That is the difficulty of recognizing an exponential problem coming up on us. Just like oil, we are exponentially using oil, but nobody's going to recognize that we have a problem of oil before the last second. Because if it's 50% out of, if, if we're up in this particular example, for 50% capacity, you have one minute to react or less than a minute. For the same reason, debt is likely to grow exponentially in the next five to 10 years as the world experiences hyperinflation. But we must also remember that commodities such as food and energy, plus many raw materials like precious metals, go up exponentially. All the bubble assets, stocks, bonds, and property will implode in real terms. 
See my recent article, Concurrent Deflation and Hyperinflation Will Ravage the World. We could, of course, blame Nixon for the debt disaster that the world is now in, but that would be too simple. Governments have throughout history inferred or interfered with the laws of nature in the simple law of supply and demand. A clueless central bankers, and for that governments, interfere in the natural ebb and flood waves of the economy. These natural cycle movements become extreme tops and bottoms. These excessive moves lead to speculative assets and credit bubbles, the inflation, hyperinflation, followed by a deflationary collapse or implosion, just on von Mises said. See the above quotes. The next years will be like the final five stadium minutes when the debt goes up exponentially by, say, 14x, the stadium going from 7% to 100% full before it all collapses. These final moves also lead to the creation of instruments that becomes fool's gold. And he's talking about cryptos. As far as I'm concerned, and the investors we advise, cryptos have nothing to do with wealth preservation and will certainly never replace gold. Bitcoin is a binary investment that might go to a million, but it could just as well go to zero. So obviously not a good risk. Brazilian professor, blockchains of fraud. Uh, Every computer scientist should be able to see that cryptocurrencies are totally dysfunctional payment systems and that blockchain technology, including smart contracts, is a technological fraud. Stolfi explains how he and 1,500 specialists, including Harvard lecturers and Google principal cloud engineer, delivered a critical letter to the U.S. Congress warning about cryptocurrencies. He explains in an interview why crypto are a pyramid scheme similar to Madoff. These pyramid schemes collapse when there are no more fools to fool. He also says that Bitcoin won't exist in 20 years. He calls blockchain a technology fraud that can never be used as a payment system due to its snail processing speed compared to Visa, for example. El Salvador and Fool's Gold. They go into Uganda, Fool's Gold, and how they um, are lying about that. Uh, Stock markets, Fool's Gold collapse is imminent. Uh, So it says, but the major move, uh, the major, the next major move of gold up will be both substantial and long term. Remember that physical precious metals must be owned, not as a speculative investment, but as the best form of wealth preservation you can hold. Uh, So that article is basically saying a debt crisis is coming. It's coming over the next five to 10 years, perhaps. We're not going to see it because of its exponential nature. The majority of people won't. And that the best way to protect your wealth is to invest in commodities and precious metals, in particular physical precious metals. Uh, for this debt crisis that's coming that most people won't be able to see because of its exponential nature. Uh, That is one of the reasons why I hold such a large um, investment in physical precious metals. Uh, I do the ratio game where I swap between certain assets, whatever has a better ratio, uh, I overinvest or overweight that. And then as as it becomes more expensive, I swap those metals to other metals uh, and increase my holdings of those other metals. That there is immune to the inflation and deflation created in the system. Uh, It does not care about that. As long as I'm increasing my ounces of metals at at, at a faster rate than things are being produced, I'm getting richer. My purchasing power of those metals is going up. The dollar value is irrelevant. And in the future, if we do have a debt crisis, the real value of those metals will be realized, we'll say the full potential value in relationship to other goods and services in the world. And I think it will it will get revalued quite dramatically because right now we've had an accompanying energy increase with GDP increase, or sorry, GDP energy increase with the expansion of money. Said that wrong at the first time. If we don't have that energy input and we can't increase our GDPs and these and this the design of the system goes exponential in its debt creation, uh, you won't have an accompanying GDP, which means you'll go into hyperinflation at some point. I'm not saying this is starting you know, today. Uh, this could be many years down the road, as far as I, all I know. Uh, but I'm just kind of allowing you guys to get a glimpse on how the system works uh, in terms of debt and how the system must increase its debt. Uh, and that one of the ways to protect yourself is physical precious metals. All right, guys. Um, That's what I've got for today. Give me a thumbs up on the content. Subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.